have 48 hours to think of a lie. Carly, you have 48 hours to think of a lie. So make it make sense. If one plus one equals two, if one plus one equals two, Carly, make it make sense. Let me turn this down real fast. Hey, y'all. It's probably not the best view, but oh, welcome back to our channel real quick. I had to come to y'all real quick and drop this real quick video because I needed to know what's up, right? So y'all heard what's going on in the media with Carly Russell and her being kidnapped. There was a baby on the side of the road and she stopped and called 911 about a baby on the side of the road. And then she called a family member. Then the family member heard her screaming. I'm at work, y'all. Did I say that already? My bad. The family member heard her screaming and then she was gone for 48 hours. Then she popped up back at home. So, you know, we all see the Amber Alerts going on like consistently, especially if you're here in Texas, baby. We get Amber Alerts so frequently, it's absolutely insane. And these kids need help to come to get home. You know what I'm saying? Like these people need help to be rescued and be found. So this Carly Russell situation, what in the entire hell is going on? What? I'm confused. Like, are you is her family in on this? Did she want to run away? Like, she's a grown person. She grown. She not a child. She not, you know, 15. So let's get into it real quick. So today, what's today's date? The 19th. Um, it comes out that after they interviewed her and, you know, after the detectives did their little due diligence and investigated, they found out that she um, did pull over on the side of the road, did call 911 to report the child. They... She, she had her hazards on on the side of the road, but during the 911 call, she traveled six football fields, is what the guy said. I don't know football, so I don't know. But she traveled six football fields. So it's baffling that a toddler outside of a car, near a freeway, near some woods, is on foot, no shoes, a t-shirt, and pampers just walking six football fields baffling right so that already to me is like a, that's a lie that's a lie all right so then she gets kidnapped this is this is now a part of her story what she's telling detectives she gets kidnapped in a four-wheeler by a man with orange hair with a bald spot so back to it this is better so yeah so um she gets kidnapped by a man with orange hair with a bald spot in the back and a woman she didn't see the woman but she heard the woman's voice and a child crying right this is what we're, we're being told investigators are saying this is what the press conference is saying so then um and i'm gonna drop a little bit of the press conference here i don't want i might i don't know i don't know because i ain't trying to get copyrighted but we'll see thank you everyone for being here today Besides me stands the team who played a significant role in this investigation. I want to thank our department, members of surrounding local law enforcement agencies, the FBI, Secret Service, United States Marshals, and Aaliyah for their assistance in this case. We said from the evening of July 13th, our focus would be the safe return of Carly Russell. That occurred on Saturday, July 15th, approximately 49 hours after she called 911 and disappeared. From that point, our focus has been to determine Carly's whereabouts during that time and what exactly took place. Let me say up front, this investigation is not over. We're still working this case and we've worked in this case until we uncover every piece of evidence that helps us account for the 49 hours that Carly Russell was missing. However, through the public interest and in some cases public fear that this story has generated, we owe it to our citizens to tell them the facts that we have uncovered. So I will give you the facts that we know today. On July 13th, at approximately 8.20 p.m., Carly left work from a business at the summit. Surveillance video from her place of employment shows Carly concealed a dark-colored bathrobe, a roll of toilet paper, and other items belonging to the business prior to her departure. She ordered food from Tzatziki's at the Colonnade 
and traveled there. She then traveled to Target on 280, where she purchased some granola bars and cheeses. From there, she remained in the parking lot at that shopping center until 9.21 p.m. when she drove to I-459. Carly communicated on her cell phone with individuals known to her while in her path of travel up to the point of calling 911 at 9.34 p.m. And at this time, we will play the 911 call in its entirety. Carly called a relative after speaking with the 911 operator. She went missing during that conversation sometime after 9.36 p.m. Traffic camera footage was obtained which depicted this portion of the incident, and that footage was analyzed as part of the investigation in conjunction with the 911 call and cell phone data to accurately determine the time frame. Carly's 911 call remains the only report of a child on the interstate, despite numerous vehicles passing through the area at that time. No one has called to report that a child is missing, and the Hoover Police Department did not locate any evidence of a small child walking down the interstate. Data from Carly's phone, including her Life360 app, shows that she traveled approximately 600 yards in her vehicle while she was on the phone with 911, stating that she was following a child. 600 yards, that is six football fields straight, 600 yards. Hoover 911 received a second call from Carly's mother stating that a relative was on the phone with her when they heard Carly scream and they had an open phone on. Hoover police officers arrived on the scene within five minutes of being dispatched and several other officers arrived shortly. They located Carly's wig, Carly's wig and cell phone in the grass near the vehicle. Her purse was located in the front seat of her vehicle with her Apple uh, watch in the purse. The food she ordered for Tzatziki's was also in the car. The items she purchased from Target, as well as the items taken from her place of employment, were not in the vehicle, nor were they 
located anywhere around the scene. Hoover police deployed all available assets from the point in the search for Carly. Additional resources were called in to include our own drone unit, crime scene investigators, numerous detectives responded to the scene. Throughout the day Friday, officers from surrounded local and federal agencies assisted Hoover police in the search for Carly Russell. Officers returned to the scene on 459 to conduct a thorough line search for evidence. K-9 teams from the Jefferson County Sheriff's Department responded to check for any sign of Carly, the child that she claimed to see, and anything else that could be considered evidence in this case. Those searches all turned up empty. Private citizens, including search parties organized by our family, friends, began looking everywhere that they could to find any trace. These searches took place throughout the day Friday and again on Saturday, yielding nothing. At 10.44 p.m. on July 15th, the Hoover 911 center receives a call from Carly's residence stating that she returned home on foot. In subsequent investigations, detectives obtained surveillance footage of Carly walking down the sidewalk alone prior to arrival at a residence. She was conscious and speaking with paramedics when she was transported to UAB. Detectives were able to obtain a brief statement from her prior to being treated and released. During the statement, she told detectives that while traveling down the interstate, she saw a baby walking down the side of the road and called 911. She stuttered when she got out of her vehicle to check on the child, a man came out of the trees and mumbled that he was checking on the baby. She claimed that the man then picked her up and she screamed. She stated he then made her go over a fence. She claims he then forced her into a car and the next thing she remembers is being in the trailer of an 18-wheeler. She stated that the male was with a female. However, she never saw the female, only hearing her voice. She also told detectives she could hear a baby crying. She told detectives the male had orange hair with a big bald spot on the back. She said she was able to escape the 18-wheeler and fled on foot, only to be captured again, and then was put in a car. She claimed she was then blindfolded, but was not tied up because the captor said they did not want to leave impressions on her wrists. She said that they took her into a house and made her get undressed. She believes they took pictures of her but she does not remember them having any physical or sexual contact. She stated the next day she woke up and was fed cheese crackers by the female. She said the woman also played with her hair but could not remember anything else. At some point, she was put back in a vehicle she claims was able to escape while it was in the West Hoover area. She told detectives she ran through lots of woods until she came out near her residence. During this interview, Detectives noted that Carly had a small injury to her lip, and she claimed that her head was hurting. She also had a tear on her shirt. Detectives also noted that she had $107 cash in her right sock. Out of respect for Carly and her family, detectives did not press for additional information in this interview and made plans to speak with her in detail after giving her time to rest. Detectives continue analyzing data from Carly's cell phone that was left behind at the scene. We enlisted the help of the United States Secret Service in conducting this analysis. Part of what data includes several internet searches and the days leading up to their disappearance that I think are rele very relevant to this case. On July 11th at 7.30 a.m., the term, you have to pay for an AMBER alert was searched. On July 13th, at 1.03 a.m., the day of her disappearance, the term, how to take money from a register without being caught, was searched. On July 13th, at 2.13 a.m., the day of her disappearance, the term, Birmingham Bus Station, was searched. On July 13th, 2.35 a.m., a search for a one-way bus ticket from Birmingham to Nashville was conducted with a departure date of July 13th. On July 13th, at 1210 p.m., a search for the movie Taken, a film about abduction, was conducted. There were two searches related to Amber Alerts on a computer at Carly's place of employment, including one regarding the maximum age of an Amber Alert. There were other searches on Carly's phone that appeared to shed some light on her mindset, but out of respect for her privacy, we will not be releasing the content 
of those searches at this time. We've asked to interview Carly a second time, but have not been granted that request. As you can see, there are many questions left to be answered, but only Carly can provide those answers. What we can say is that we've been unable to verify most of Carly's initial statement made to investigators, and we have no reason to believe that there is a threat to the public safety related, related to this particular case. Thank you very much. So she gets kidnapped, and then she manages to escape only to get kidnapped again, but this time it wasn't the four four wheeler, it was a car. So they kidnapped her in a car, took her to somewhere, whatever, took her to a house, stripped off her clothes, but did not do anything to her that she can remember. But she may they may have taken pictures and photos of her. Okay. They can't the investigators cannot get her to come back out answer any questions because of her mental state right now she's distraught she's whatever they said right i get that because if you if i was kidnapped baby i'd be in escape baby i'll be distraught okay but i would also want to do everything i could to get the kidnappers caught right so what y'all think i mean i can tell you what i think i think this is all made up but let's get back into it before I tell y'all what I think. So, a few days before, it was some on her search engine, she searched, um, how long does do um, Amber Alerts last? What age do you have to be to have an Amber Alert? Um, she searched um, the Birmingham bus station or some bus station girl child. Now, now I'm trying to, now I'm forgetting stuff. But she searched the bus station to get a one-way ticket to Nashville. Or how much is a one-way ticket to Nashville. And then she also searched the movie Taken, which is about a kidnap, uh, a kid, a girl that got kidnapped. If you ever watched Taken, it's about, kid, it's, it's about somebody getting kidnapped, right? And then, so these are all the things. She stole from her job, toilet paper and all this stuff. And then stopped at Target to get something. This is before she called 911 and saw the kid and boop, 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 boop. But when they got to her car, there was no Target bag. And the stuff from her job was, was, not, was not there as well. But her wig was in the car. Her Apple Watch was in her purse. Her purse was in the car. And her tzatziki, the food she ordered. Right? So now she's home. She doesn't want to talk to investigators anymore. She had all this time, 48 hours of being missing. The uh, uproar. The world was in an uproar. Okay? And posting her being missing and everybody looking for her and all this stuff. You have 48 hours. If this was not true, allegedly, right? Allegedly, you were kidnapped. But if this was not true... You have 48 hours to think of a lie. Carly, you have 48 hours to think of a lie. So my question is this. Where was the car? You got kidnapped in a four-wheeler. You managed to escape. And they got caught again, kidnapped again in a car. Where was the car, baby? Was it attached to the four-wheeler? Was it parked somewhere and you try to run and they caught up to you? Like, make it make sense. If one plus one equals two, if one plus one equals two, Carly, make it make sense. Because it don't make no sense, sis. It don't make no sense. To me, it don't make no sense. And, and it sucks to even get to this point because we were all praying. We were all rooting. We were all hoping that after you showed up back home, after the young lady showed up back home, that, you know... The investigation was going to go on the way. They were going to catch her kidnapper. And this was not a lie. This was the truth. Like, we did not think of this to be a false situation. Like, we did not. So, what happened? Was you trying to run away and couldn't figure it out? Like, you are grown. So, you don't got, you don't have to run away. You could just go on and leave. Like, shoot, I done moved out of Boston. I just got up, picked up a case, and left. You could just go on and leave. So, I'm just confused. Y'all drop in the comments below what y'all think happened. Make it make sense. What did y'all think happened to Carly for real for y'all? Anyways, this, like I said, this is going to be a quick video. 
that's it. I'm gonna I'm leave it here. I can't wait to see, you know, what happened, how this all unfolds. And somebody in the comments in the um, in the press conference said, I can't wait till the movie come out, y'all. Y'all are funny. Y'all a mess. But, you know, Black Twitter gonna eat this up. They already started. Um, so, yeah, drop in the comments and let me know what y'all think happened. Was it real? Was it not real? Drop, drop, drop below. Follow, like, comment, subscribe to our channel. Again, I'm not a reaction channel or nothing, but I had to say something on this one because this one is something else. This this one is something crazy. I, I don't even know what to call it, but it's something crazy, y'all. So, no, again, if I said something out of pocket, I apologize. I'm just stating what was in the press conference and what I see and what I think. And I think... Something ain't right. Something ain't sitting right here. And we need to, we need all the details. We need to know what happened to Carly. What happened, Carly? What happened? Drop it in the comments and let me know what y'all think. I'm going to see y'all later. Bye, guys.